Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Lang, and welcome to this video. And I just wanted to share a few words about gluten-free diet versus because of the multiple number of patients I've had in the last two days where it was a major issue. So I thought I would kind of go back and revisit this. Now, a lot of people, increasing numbers of people, as you know, probably are becoming gluten sensitive. And uh, this is compared to 20 years ago when it was relatively uncommon. You know, we really didn't start to see gluten sensitivity increasing till the mid 1980s. And since then, it's continuing to grow. Now, the reason for that is a bit complicated. I'm not going to go into that now, except to say that the reason that it does happen is closer to being an autoimmune condition than a food allergy. And without going again into details, if it's more like an autoimmune condition, the issue with gluten sensitivity is that a little bit of gluten can go a long way in terms of causing this inflammatory cascade that produces the symptoms of gluten sensitivity. So a lot of people, when they decide to go gluten-free, don't go completely gluten-free. <laughs> they just decrease it. And so they decrease to the level where their symptoms are tolerable, wherever that level is. But unfortunately, if a person is sensitive to gluten, they're still having inflammatory changes from that gluten stimulating the immune system in the body and triggering a cascade. Now, the problem is that most gluten sensitivity doesn't appear to be happening in the gut, although that's where we notice it the most easily. Gluten sensitivity happens in every organ system, and it, there's really good evidence that gluten sensitivity is responsible for much of what we call memory loss and dementia. Now, the, the problem of studying the brain is that we can't do biopsies of it, obviously. So some of this is conjecture, but there's some pretty good observation where people cut out gluten and they have significant improvements in their brain functions. So in the cases of the patients that I was seeing, uh, all of them were having a sort of a recurrence of some symptoms because they weren't completely gluten-free anymore. They had had the improvement of a gluten-free diet and then slowly were allowing gluten foods to, to work back into the diet with the idea that, well, if I can tolerate it, it's not too bad for me. But the problem is if you're truly gluten sensitive, it's triggering a response of your immune system and it's going to cause problems that you can't fill. So my recommendation for patients is if they have any kind of gluten sensitivity evidence that they should go 100% gluten free. At this point, we don't have a way to fix this gluten sensitivity issue, which is skyrocketing uh, because it's connected a lot to glyphosate uh, in our environment. And there's so much glyphosate, which is the active ingredient, the main active ingredient in the, the weed killer Roundup. There's so much glyphosate that it's pretty hard to eliminate that part of this gluten sensitivity issue that's growing. So the point is that gluten sensitivity, if you've got it, I would strongly encourage you to go completely gluten-free and just stay that way. Now it's possible that down the road, a long time, that there's a chance for the immune system to kind of rebalance itself if you do everything, but most people aren't doing that either. They're not allowing their GI tract to completely recover. So for the, for the foreseeable future, if you have gluten sensitivity, I encourage 100% gluten-free. There's a lot of good alternatives. If you have to eat gluten-free and low glycemic, then the ketogenic alternatives are really good. If you're normal weight, you don't have to be worrying about glycemic index, then the gluten-free flours that have been put together by different people in the food industry, they're pretty good. Uh, and Either way, there's some alternatives that you can go allow you to enjoy a variety of foods without having to worry about the reaction of gluten. Now, as an aside, there's a pretty good evidence that it's the kind of the, of the wheat variety that could be triggering gluten sensitivity in some people and, and that some of these folks can actually tolerate gluten that's in the ancient grains especially if it's a fermented product like a sourdough bread. That's the subject of a different video. And I just wanna acknowledge that that's a different issue 
We're, we're not, what I'm talking about is the usual variety of gluten-related uh, foods that occur in the United States. So I wish you well. God bless and have a good day.